Good morning or good afternoon, coaches. This is Coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. We are a new startup company based in Austin, Texas, where we are focused on creating a platform to help student athletes connect with other student athletes as they build out their network, to help student athletes connect with college coaches during the, pro during the recruiting process, and to help uh, student athletes transition successfully, successfully from high school to college and then either into a pro career or into a career in their major. We have got a very exciting uh, prospect in the class of 22 with us today. Jackson Fleming is from Manville High School. Uh, he's an athlete. He plays receiver and DB and a lot of other positions. He's 5'11", 165 pounds, and has a really strong GPA of 3.4. Jackson, how are you doing this afternoon? Good. How about yourself? Man, I'm, I'm doing great. And uh, thank you for your time to come on the show to tell your story. Let, let's jump right into it here. Uh, you know, we're in uh, this, this COVID-19 environment right now. Tell us how you're staying in shape and getting ready for the upcoming season uh, with what's going on right now. I'm doing great. Um, I work out every single day in my garage. My parents bought us a weight set a couple of years ago. And so basically that was just a big blessing for me because instead of all of the gyms are closed and all these things, it's very hard for some people to work out because everything's closed now. I have a weight room in my garage that I go to every single day. And okay. if there's an open field, I, I go and do some footwork drills or, or do anything that I can to stay to stay fit to get ready for the season. Okay, so hearing all that, you think you'll be pretty ready when they when they open up. Uh, Sometimes they're going to be open up the summer condition here in the beginning of June. Are you looking forward to getting back with your teammates and with your coaches to work out at school? Oh, yes, sir. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, you guys are a very talented team, and I'm probably going to make another deep run uh, in the playoffs. Let's jump in. You're kind of a young guy here, class 22, going into your junior year. Let's watch a little bit of your video, and why don't you talk to us and the coaches who will be watching uh, about some of these great plays you're about to make. Yes, sir. All right. And here we go. In this game, I believe we were playing Sterling, um, outside receiver, on the on the bottom. Then we ran a screenplay. I took that one up. And this one, I'm I'm on the top of the screen, running a slant. And this was our first scrimmage. I'm not able to remember where it was, but I'm on the I'm on the top of the screen, and I, and I ran a hitch. And would it come back and get the ball? That's good. Thank you. I'm on the top of the screen again. I believe. Oh yeah, this one I, was, I ran a post and scored. A slant on this one. This was against Crosby. This was against Madison whenever it was a run play and okay. I had to make the play. That's a great block. Uh, a lot of coaches want to see receivers that can also block. Uh, let me come out of this real quick. And so let me ask you a couple of things. I've watched your video, I don't know how many times, probably a dozen times here. How can you more comfortable playing the outside receiver? Do you, are you okay playing inside the slot? Can you repeat the question? It was cracking up. Yeah, it was choppy right now. Hold on, let me, let me stop the video here. Okay. Yeah, what I was asking you, uh, Jackson, is uh, are you comfortable playing both the inside and outside receiver positions? Yes, sir, I am. I'm more, like, really for me, inside and outside is, like, the same for me. I, it's just different routes, so I'm, I'm more comfortable with playing both. And then you, you seem pretty fearless in almost some of those slant routes. You're running the bubble screen coming inside. Uh, you're not fearful coming inside with some of the big boys, are you? No, I'm not, I'm not scared of contact. <laughs> Never. Okay. Is it, tell me, how long have you been playing receiver? Are you, are you a converted guy, or have you always been receiver since you started playing football? Um, I've always been a defensive guy, but going into high school, I've always wanted to get a shot at playing receiver. So I, so I wanted to, like, get in, like, the just of, you know, catching the ball and running. That's always been my thing. And so I got a shot at it. You know, it was, a, it was a very good experience, but I'm more comfortable now with, like, I'm a defensive guy. I like to deflect the ball from people. I like to pick it off and run and score. I, I like the defensive style. Okay. 
So you feel comfortable playing both positions? Will you play on both sides of the ball this fall? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Let's switch over. Let's talk a little bit about your academics. Uh, got the strong 3.4 GPA. Talk to us about uh, how much importance you put into your academics. Uh, I, like every single day, I I study because I want to be a I want to measure in like sports medicine, and so now I'm taking classes like principles of health, of health science, um, anatomy and physiology stuff like that, because um you know with my grandmother she's sick right now, and I see all these things about with people helping with the body and I, and I want to know more about the body so I can be able to help others too, so that's where I am with like the health science and. And the doctor said, surgeon, I'm not really good with blood, so I'm not able to <laughs> cut somebody open and do all that stuff. But just knowing about the body and, and if something's broken, I know how to, you know, just knowing how to fix that. Yeah, a great response. And, and prayers going out to your grandmother and your family as you, as you guys help her uh, come through that. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, yes, do you, what are some of your favorite subjects in school? Are you a math? Are you a science guy? Or do you like reading and writing? Yes. English? What? Science. Again? Science. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Biology, chemistry, what, what level are you at in, in science at school? Um, right now I'm in chemistry. I believe next year I will be in bio. I'm not, I don't really remember, but I know like last year I took biology, now I'm in chemistry. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, like, I'm, I'm more like biology because it deals with the environment, like with, the, with, like with all that stuff. So that's where I'm really at with it. One of the successes of being a, a, a good student athlete is balancing academic life and your sports life tell us how you balance that to keep the high gpa that you have i really just study every night because my parents are so hard on me they're like you know don't play don't pay i mean oh play so like with me it's like school comes first before anything so my priorities are god family school service sports then friends so school comes before all of that before all the sports and stuff. So I need, so like my parents are so hard on me with the fact that, you know, you gotta get your schoolwork done for you to do what you want to do, which is play football. Because if you have a bad GPA or bad grades, what colleges are gonna even want to come, come to you? Because like, they're like, oh, well this kid, he's a great athlete and all, but we're not able to rely on him on campus because he has bad grades. Right. Well, hey, that's, that's a great response. I love your, uh, your list of priorities. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in, you know, faith, family, education, and football. And you take the, the, take the first three serious, the football becomes easy. It's, it's the ones that put football first that are the guys that struggle uh, in high school and college. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, some of the things you've learned uh, as far as from, from football, the life skills you've learned from playing the game of football. For me, and personally me, is the mindset for the mindset of football because like with football it's well like for me in my opinion more than half of football is mentality and the other side is is like is all physical so once you get your mind right on what you want to do you know your mind right to hit somebody then the physical stuff's gonna come right after that so really just just have your mindset with it and that's where i'm at now i'm, I'm like getting better with my mind and stuff like that now, you're absolutely right. As you get higher in this game, even from freshman JV to varsity and then on to college, uh, the athleticism, everybody is, everybody's fast and strong, uh, but it's those that have the mental capacity, the mental toughness, and the mental preparation that are successful at the game. Uh, real quick, going back to your academics, uh, take this time to shout out maybe a favorite teacher or counselor or an advisor, somebody that's helped you uh, keep those grades up. Who do you want to shout out right now at Manville? Mr. Barajas, my health, my uh, principal is a health science teacher. He's an amazing dude. He had, out of all the teachers, he had the most faith out of me because I struggled a little bit, but he was always there for me to help me. I stayed after school for tutorials, and he always he was always there for me. So that's a, that, that, that's an amazing guy. Uh, that's what's up. I like that. Let's switch over to you as a player. Uh, going into your junior campaign here, um, what would you consider your strengths and weaknesses that you're going to work on this coming fall? My strengths, I believe my hip and feet movement, those are that and, and, ball, and ball skills. My weaknesses would be, um, I would have to say, just just getting better in, well, like, not really that, but. 
What about your eyes? What about your hand using your hands? Uh, you know, you hand, hand eye coordination's always been like second nature for me. It's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, but like for my weaknesses, I, I would have to say just in like during the game, don't think and just play. Yeah, I would say that. It's like leave like whenever the play starts, don't think of anything. Just play the game and have fun because I tend to get in my mind sometimes because I just I want to I want to get it right. I don't want to mess up. Yeah. So like that. So that that even goes back to the mental side of it. But yeah. So I would say that would be a little weakness, but I'm getting better at it. Yeah. No. Weakness that you're working on. It's constructive, and I, I like that because if you're thinking during a game, you're not playing at full speed. Your thinking should happen during practice. And so when you get to Friday night, it's just a matter of going out and playing the game that we love and, and just reacting and responding to it, the ups and downs. So you've got you definitely have that right there. Um, let's talk about, you know, what you do. There's a lot of talented uh, players in your class. What do you do to differentiate yourself uh, as a receiver and a DB uh, amongst, your, your, amongst your competition? I would have to say just to, like, just work harder because, you know, I know some people that don't, but most of my friends, they do because I, I put myself in that, in that kind of space of people who want to be on the same level as me. So, so I just – I just work hard every day because if you're not working, somebody else is. Right. And so, you know, the big saying is the early bird catches the worm. So I wake up early in the morning and just work out. And I just keep going and just keep going because I know where I want to be. And that's to be a big time D1 player and possibly go to the NFL. Okay. Well, that's a good segue. My next question to you is, you know, how's your recruiting going? Who are you hearing from? Who do you want to hear from? Uh, and which, what's been your recruiting experience so far? Right now, I haven't had any college coaches, like, talk to me. But it, it's been, like, they'll, like, just like my videos on Twitter or they'll start following me. You know, there's, there's been a lot of big-time colleges, like, like Power 5 colleges who are now following me on Twitter. It's just not, not really all of them, like, contact me yet. Yeah. But yeah, though that that's really how it is right now. But I know that one day it's going to happen. Oh so. yeah, for sure. Uh, let's let's fast forward to a year from now. Um, do you have a list of schools that you would love to hear from that had that combination of providing the education that you want and the kind of football you want to play? Is is a distance from home an issue? You want to stay close to home? Tell us a little bit about what you and your family's criteria is for picking that school when you're a senior. For me, it's basically, it has to feel like a family environment because if it's not, then I'm not going to get anything out of it. So, like, of course, Georgia is, is my top school. It's because, you know, they have a very good football program and I also have family in, in Atlanta. You know, my cousin played for Memphis, and he, and, and, he, and he lives there, and he also played for the Green Bay Packers. So, like, I have a, I have a ton of family there. It's always been in Georgia. Ohio State, and also Ohio, I have a lot of family down in Ohio. So it's always been dumb. And then LSU, that's that's close to home. It's, it's like not really right down the street, but it's right there. Um, it's always been those top three schools right there, and also Oklahoma too. I have a little bit of family in Oklahoma, but so it's, it's always been those four. Okay, so it sounds like you're kind of wide open and, and distance from home is an issue, but you'd like to play at a school that's kind of near other parts of your family. Yes, sir. Okay, makes sense. I like it. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, college coaches want to understand your relationship with your high school coaches to give them an idea of what you're going to be like for them. Talk to us about your relationship with your position coach and your head coach at the high school. Really, they're just family to me. You know, you have Coach Bennett. He's the receivers coach. And Coach Hall, who's the head coach. And Coach Rob and Herzog. All those coaches, they, they're really like, they're just family and, and they make you feel like family. And we're all like, we're all really cool with each other. What kind of an impact have uh, those two coaches had on you both on and off the field? Just basically is like everything about them is positive. You know, I've known Coach Bennett for years, even before I was in high school because him and my cousin were close friends. And so I've known him for a while. And now it's just like, with like everything about them they you know they teach me things life lessons they 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 teach me lessons about football all of those coaches at my school they're all they're all very great men okay jackson how do you define leadership and how do you lead going into your junior year 
I would have to say setting an example for my friends, which would be, you know, getting to the weight room early, getting into the locker room before everybody. Um, whenever we're outside and we're all messing up, be that person to tell everybody, to, come on, let's keep going. We're, gonna, we're not going to stop until we get it right. Just be, just be that spoken kind of person to get everybody in check and go win the championship. That, that's our main goal, basically. Okay. You're now a junior. Uh, you were just a freshman, sophomore just recently. What are you doing to help lead some of those uh, underclassmen that will be playing varsity this fall? Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, yeah, so if you're going to your junior year, tell me about what you're doing from a leadership standpoint to help those underclassmen who are trying to get to varsity. I would have to say just basically the same thing said in an example, you know, not doing any like the wrong stuff uh, outside of school and inside of school, going to class early, getting the hell. Basically, that, there's a one kid who, who's like, he's like my little brother, uh, Chancellor Whittaker. I mean, uh, Whitaker, he goes to North Shore. He doesn't really go to my school, but he's always been, you know, he's like a little brother to me. And also my little brother, Mason Fleming, you know, he's, he's, come, he's, he's gonna be a freshman this year. You know, so I, I just wanna set the example for them and for, and for them to be just as good as me, if not better. It's like, those are like my little brothers, so. Well, it, it's funny you mentioned that. Let me ask you this, you're a junior now, share with me and these coaches one thing you would tell your, your brother as a freshman that you wish you knew as a freshman? What have you learned these two years? Man, if I'd known that, I would have did this. What's one thing you'd give back to them? I would have to say to be confident in your play. Know who you are and stand by who you are and, and just ball out. Okay. I like it. Okay. Um, we, we just talked about your grandmother a little bit earlier, but I'll ask you, you know, uh, Overcoming adversity is a big part of being successful as a student athlete. Talk to me about a time, either personally or dealing with football, that you had to overcome some type of adversity. Um, I would have to say whenever I found out that my grandmother was really sick, and then I believe I had a game before that, and then I really struggled with it because, you know, me and her share the same birthday. And, you know, I used to live with her and stuff like that. We have so many great memories. And, you know, I, I had to, that really sat on me. And, you know, I had to, you know, get out of my mind and I, and I had to go play the game. So it's, it's really, you know, it's a really heartful moment because of, because of how, how it all played out. Do you use that as a motivation also to kind of play for your grandmother and, and how she's fighting through her illness right now? Yes, sir. It's always been my motivation. Okay. Well, let's switch gears here. Let's talk about you personally. What are some of your interests away from football? Are you, like, are you into gaming? Are you into your apps and your phone? What do you do to kill time, especially now with COVID-19? For me, I like to draw. I'm a, I, I draw a little. This is like sometimes it's, it's a little hobby. You know, um, I like to eat. That's amazing. <laughs> I always like to eat. <laughs> yeah, really those two. Those are like, you know, I draw a lot. Just like a little something. <laughs> Okay. What about, uh, so no, no, you're not a big video game guy? I mean, I play Madden and 2K. Those are like my favorite games. But like if, I'm, if I don't have nothing else to do, if I get bored on the game, I go and draw. Or I just sit on the game and play Madden. Okay. So yeah, I just love to do that sometimes. What about when you have spare time and you're on your cell phone? What are some of the apps you spend a lot of time with? Are you an Instagram guy, TikTok, Snap, Twitter? What would you spend a lot of time with on your phone? Um, I have to say Instagram and Twitter, TikTok sometimes. I'm not really like a TikTok famous guy, but I, you know I do it sometimes. Okay, but those are like the top three apps. And then uh, when we get on the other side of this virus and kind of get back uh, to some type of normalcy, you're hanging out with your friends, maybe your girlfriend. What's your shoe game? Are you a big shoe gear guy or no? What are you wearing? I like Nikes and Jordans. Those are my favorite, especially like the Jordan Elevens. I I don't have them yet. Because you know they're pretty expensive, but I gotta earn. I gotta earn that. But you know, I like those, the Jordan Twelves, the ones like all of the retro Jordans. I love. And for Nike, Vapor Max, they're the comfortable as I get out. Um, I like the Off White, not, not Nike shoes and Jordan shoes. Off White is one of my favorite brands. With I mean collaborations with Nike, 
And those are like because you wear the Jordan shoes. I got to ask you: Did you get a chance to watch the Last Dance? Did you watch the documentary? And if you did, what's take? Tell me one thing you learned about my uh, Michael Jordan from that from that documentary. One thing I learned. There's a lot of things, but <laughs> one thing I learned is to don't be scared of competition and set that example for others. And no matter, like, it's for Michael, he didn't care what nobody else thought of him. He played his game, and whoever don't want to be on my level can go. So that's the main, really, that one, that's the main one that I really learned from is don't care about what, other, what others think of you. You just go out there and ball, and whoever don't want to be on that level with you, they got to go. Yeah, it, it, Jackson, I kind of have the same takeaway. I, I got to know Michael, ja uh, Michael Jordan, my brother, played for the Bears during that whole 80s and 90s when they were taking off. And uh, he is the most competitive person I've ever met, uh, and, and not in a bad way. Uh, but I, like you, the takeaway I had was that, you know, a lot of kids now, we want to be boys, we'll compete, but we want to be boys and we're hurting everybody's feeling. And, and Michael was like, no, nah, forget about that. As long as there's a scoreboard, there's competition, you know, I'm going to be great every time I hit the court. That's one thing I've always respected about him. So I, I definitely have the same takeaway that you did. Um, tell me, we're going into um, the fall. It's uh, before a big game in the locker room. Uh, what do you listen to? Who's on your playlist? Who do you listen to to get you hyped before a game? What, what artists? I would have to say Lil Baby, NBA Youngboy, some old school. I like Notorious B.I.G., Tupac. Okay. Um, well, it's a, it's a lot of people. It's, it's a lot. I have a, a Key Glock, you know, that's, that's a terrible name, but I like his music. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a variety of artists that I like to listen to. And then in pregame, how do you like to prepare for the game? Are you a guy that likes to get really hype or you like to kind of be by yourself and just kind of think about your assignments and what you're going to do in the game? Which type are you? It's a little bit of both. You know, I'm to myself, but at the same time, I want to get hyped because we're going to go out there and have fun. But sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm up to myself and I want to just put my earbuds in and listen to music and just picture everything that I want to do in the game. And, you know, think about my assignments and what I have to do. Just go out there and have fun. Okay. Give me a college or pro player that you pad your game off of. There who, is Slay. Who is somebody going to remind you of when they watch you play this fall? There is Slay Jr. Okay. He's my, like, my favorite player of all time. Him and Deion Sanders, though. Those are, like, my favorite two corners. You know, for Darius Slay, you know, his feet and hips are just, like, they're outstanding. And for Deion, it's his speed and his confidence. And so I take those two, put them together, and that's what I want to be like. I can respect that. Simple question here. Tell these coaches, uh, when did you start playing the game of football and why do you love the game? I started playing football, I believe, I, think I was five. I, I believe I was five. You know, I played because my family is, is like, they're full of athletes. You know, I told you about my cousin who played for the, who, who, who played for Memphis and went to the Green Bay Packers. His name's Tim Goodwell. Um, my other cousin, Landon Goodwill, which is his brother, he played for, I believe, UTEP. He played for them. And, you know, it's like my whole family is very, it's very athletic. And I love it because, it's like, I'm a movement person. I like to move around. I don't like to just sit down and just, you know, just do anything. I like to run, move. I love running. I like just to move around and, you know, just get, just get away from home sometimes and just, throw the football, and just work out. All right. Give these coaches a little insight. When you, when you do get, get able to, to get on campus for a visit, what's your favorite food? If you want to recruit Jackson, you better have what kind of food ready on board? Waffles. Really just chicken and waffles. Okay. Favorite. <laughs> chicken and waffles, like Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in Los Angeles, Texas. Bet. I'm from Bet. California. I feel you on that. Yes, it is very good. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, take this time right now uh, to tell some of these coaches about other players either on your team or that you've played against that they should be looking at to recruit that are maybe being under recruited right now. Right now, I would have to say, you know, my boys, um, Cornelius Banks, Malachi McLean, Isaiah King, Kelby Williams, Jordan Benjamin, Brooke Honore, one of the very good punter. He punts over 60 yards right now. 
Um, Chan Chancellor Whitaker, Mason Fleming, my little brother. Um, <laughs> uh, who else? Man, it's so it's so many people who are who are like who are just my boys. Yeah, I can name all of them. I would, you know. <laughs> but, well, what about somebody that you've played against that you said, man, I respect that guy, whether he was a DB or another receiver that you covered. Is there anybody that stands out that you played against? Stefan Boogie Johnson. Yeah, I know Boogie. Yeah, yep. he's, the boy is cold. <laughs> <laughs> Him. Uh, I haven't played against Denver Harris, but we went against each other in Little League. He might not remember, but I just remembered that he was on the Packers. I was on the Sienna Stallions, and he was that one little fast kid running touchdowns every single game. Yeah. And I just found out yesterday that it was him. So yeah. I found it kind of funny. Um, yeah. Him, I would, it's, uh, I would, it's a variety of people. But those are like the top two that I really do respect. Okay. You're obviously a good athlete. Tell me, outside of football, what other sports do you play? Basketball, baseball, track, lacrosse? What else do you do besides football? Really, I used, uh, I used to play basketball. I also played lacrosse whenever I was in junior high. It was just something different. I wanted to, you know, get into that. I also run track. That's a must, yeah. and especially for my position. You know, I don't, I don't like track, but I have to like it. Yeah, it's gonna get me better. So yeah, those are the uh, sports that I play. I also played baseball too. I was, I don't know why I really stopped, but I'm gonna get back into it. So okay, okay. Let's talk about you and and how you give back. Uh, obviously, you have a lot of strong people in your life helping you be successful. Uh, tell me about your work with uh, Hope Over Hurt and other things you're doing with your church or in other uh, organizations. Um, for that, Hope Over Hurt was basically my uh, my mom's friend. You know, she was she's very good with the word and, you know, preaching to people. And she does a lot of work around the city of Houston. And I just said, I want to help out. So, you know, she, she had um, seen me go help out with Hurricane Harvey. I did that. Um, I gave food to the elders during that time too. And right now I'm sending letters to healthcare workers saying thank you because you know, with all this going on, without them, everybody will just be sick. You know, just seeing my grandma from how she is and seeing the doctors coming to the house and help her is, is uh, I'm very thankful for that. No, oh, that's what's up, man. I like that. I love you to give back. Uh, let me ask you this. Another thing the coaches want to know is what, what type of a learning style you have. Are you, would you consider yourself a verbal, visual, or physical learner? I would say physical, because I like to have my hands on things, just so I can, it's like, for me, if I can just put my hands on, it just transfers to my mind, and I can remember touching it, and all these things, I'm just a better learner with like, just physical learning. Okay, and then the follow-up question is, tell these coaches how you prepare for games each Friday night. Are you a film guy? Are you a scouting report guy? Or do you like to wait until the night of the game to kind of, you know, go with the, the ins and outs of the game? I would say I like to watch film just to see who I'm, who I'm going up against, you know, who to look for, who's their star player on that team. And once I know that, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for him. He's, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be a scare to this game. So I'm going to go for him. I'm Whatever he's doing, I'm going to stop that. Basically how, like, in the last dance, whenever Michael was playing against, I believe, Boston, Boston was like, we need to, if we can just stop Michael. No, I don't think it was Boston. I, think, I believe it was the, the Detroit Pistons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take him out in the air. That, that's what it was. Yep. Take him out in the air. You know, if, if you can stop Michael, then we'll win. So whoever that star player is, if we can just stop, if, if we can stop him, then that, and that's how we're going to win. So. How would you rate your football IQ? Or are you somebody that just plays a game who's athletic, or do you actually, are you a student of the game? Do you, you mentioned Dion and, and watching other guys. Tell us about uh, that part of your game. I would say I'm a student of the game because, you know, really football is just like school for me. You know, you, you, you have to learn. You have to know the plays. You know, you have to write things down. I'm really good with writing things down, especially plays. Like, I, I like to um, draw lines of where my eyes should be if I'm having to key the, the, uh, the receiver and the quarterback, you know, the certain kind of zones that I'm in. I like to, you know, draw lines in my assignments. So I will have to say that. Okay. Simple question here because coach will want to know, why do you think your game translates to the college level? Because I just believe that I'm the best, basically. 
<laughs> basically I just I just know that whoever's in front of me, I'm gonna just dog you. Basically, that's my mindset with that with anything. You know, I don't wanna lose. Whenever I and if I ever do lose, I get right back up and it just ain't over. We're gonna keep on going until I win. So that's so that's my mindset. Tell me who is going to be involved in helping you make the decision of what co- what school you'll commit to. My parents and my trainer. Okay. And then let's fast forward. You have three or four great years in college, and you're in New York City waiting for your name to be called the NFL draft. Who is sitting at your table waiting for your name to be called by the commissioner? My mom, my dad, and my two brothers. Okay. And we got to plan it out. Lastly, here as we finish up, uh, there's a term in business called the elevator pitch. You have 30 seconds to tell these coaches why they should recruit Jackson Fleming. Go. I'm a very outstanding person. I'm a, I, I'm an athlete. I'm very smart. I'm physical. I have a very great mindset. And I'm ready for anything. Stay ready. You don't have to get ready, basically. I like the mentality, Jackson. I'm a fan, man. I, I look forward to watching you play this fall. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Please tell your mom and your family. And once again, we are lifting up your grandmother in prayer and I uh, hope the best for you. And we'll see you soon, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Be blessed. You too.